हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम टू आई एग्जाम बी होप यू आर लैकिंग द फ्री मॉक टेस्ट ऑफ आई एग्जाम बी सो टुडे वी आर डिस्कसिंग इन दिस वीडियो अबाउट द पेमेंट सिस्टम इन इंडिया पेमेंट सिस्टम हैज एक्चुअली टेकन लॉट ऑफ इंपॉर्टेंस इन रिसेंट टाइम स्पेशली आफ्टर द डिमोनिटाइजेशन द इलेक्ट्रॉनिक पेमेंट्स हैव बिकम मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट पेमेंट सिस्टम स्टार्ट विद इवन फिजिकल करेंसी द कैश द मीन्स टू यूज मेक ऑल द पेमेंट्स throughout the century then still it is very very important part of the payment system but here we are going to the other important methods of payment system because cash is like simple to understand we all have been using cash for long so we will understand the brief development of how the payment system has been developing throughout the years the recent technologies in this and we will then do some of the questions important questions related to rtgs and eft imps upi so that you understand it for the exam purpose so starting with the role of rbi in the payment system so rbi is the regulator of the payment and settlement system and these powers has come to rbi through payment and settlement systems act 2007 and this power within the rbi actually there is a separate board for this so within the rbi this board of regulation and supervision so there is a separate board earlier we discussed about the board of financial supervision bfs when we were discussing about the prompt corrective action if you want to know more about prompt corrective action there is a separate video for this go to that video and you will understand also the bfs thing so here it is bpss board for regulation and supervision of payment and settlement system which is the overall decision maker under the act under the payment and settlement act and this board is a subcommittee of the central board of the rbi and this is the highest policy making body for payment system in the country bps uh, bpss is empowered with authorizing prescribing policies and setting up standard for regulating and supervising or the payment and settlement system in the country and the department of payment and settlement of the rbi works as a secretary to the board and execute its directions so you need to just understand that payment and settlement is regulated by rbi and there is a board for this purpose the history of payment and settlement is is like uh, with the starting of money so the purpose of money is payment and settlement there are other purposes also storage etc so it is started with like invention of money cash is still playing a lot of lot of part in the payment settle, settlement so you can say cash based settlement or paper based so paper based comprises of cash based settlement currency cash and other paper based systems are like demand draft check pay orders pay order is also a kind of uh, check it is called banker's check so this is a simple exam question sometime what is banker's check nowadays it is not much in use because of the electronic mean banker's check so still these paper based systems are constituting about 60% of non cash transaction because cash is different but their value has reduced to like 10 15% so in value terms because the bigger amount of settlement is coming through electronic uh, systems so what are electronic systems electronic payments so electronic payments most popular one are like rtgs neft imps now upi all this you have heard so i am just touching briefly here how it all started so electronic payment that started in mid 80s in india and before that for the paper based payment system efficiency there were mechanization of clearing house clearing houses where this check processing systems were introduced by rbi because check has always been a very important source of payment before the electronic payments started so clearing houses clearing houses is where all bank come they bring together their check say checks collected by the customers of uh, icici bank and drawn on sbi bank so that will they will all will meet at a place called clearing house and whoever has to pass the check the bank say as the check is drawn on sbi so sbi will pass the check they will collect their check pnb will collect their check so all this clearing is done in the clearing house so first the automation and the mechanization of the clearing house happened in 80s and then slowly the focus shifted to electronic payments and electronic payments started first with ecs now this is not much in vogue 
but still you shall know the name ECS is the name suggests electronic clearing system ECS and ECS started with ECS credit ECS credit means if I have to send money to you so I will start that electronic clearing system so I will submit a form to the bank and bank using the ECS platform credit will credit your account ECS credit then after some time ECS debit started so in ECS debit somebody is getting the mandate to debit the account for example I give a mandate to telephone company say I am having so those days I am having account with say BSNL so BSNL I have given a debit mandate say up to a limit of 2000 rupees maximum per month so if my bill is say 1500 or whatever 1200 so every month I need not to pay my bill because that time the, the other option was to pay it by check there was no mobile payment no electronic payment so I have given a ECS debit mandate to BSNL so BSNL generates a debit file on the ECS debit system and automatically my bank account is debited by that amount it may be 1200, 1300, 1150 whatever is the amount of the bill so that kind of ECS debit started after that and then came NEFT NEFT now you know because still it is very popular in 2005 NEFT started NEFT is National Electronic Fund Transfer and RTGS also started in 2004 so almost same time and another important milestone before this in the payment system was creation of CCIL which was set up in 2001 it's a kind of industry association it was set up by banks financial institutions and primary dealers primary dealers are authorized by RBI so before proceeding further let me explain you the brief difference between RTGS and EFT and IMPS if I write RTGS here so as the name suggests RTGS is real time gross settlement so here the settlement is gross settlement and you need to understand this difference between gross settlement and the net settlement because in case of IMPS and NEFT it is net settlement and here also net settlement so in case of gross settlement what happens so first let me tell you how the settlement happens I told it in some other video also so this is RBI and uh, suppose this is SBI this side and for example HDFC bank this side so 10 customers of SBI wants to pay to HDFC bank and then the 5 customers of HDFC has to pay to SBI so suppose 10 lakh rupees is to be transferred from SBI to HDFC and HDFC has to transfer 5 lakh rupees to SBI and they both maintain account in RBI so what transactions RBI can pass in this is simply transfer a net of 5 lakh rupees to HDFC so this is netting this is netting so say for example in this case throughout the day there were 10 lakh rupees whatever check or request through NEFT that has come to transfer money to HDFC account from SBI account and another request of 5 lakh rupees to be it can be 5 crore because actually it will be more 500 crore or kind of but here you have to understand the example so this 5 is to be transferred from HDFC to SBI so in netting say at the end of the day or at the end of the hour hour you can say in example of NEFT so in one hour this transaction happens so at the end of the one hour RBI transfers 5 lakh rupees to HDFC account so this is netting but what happened in case of RTGS in RTGS first SBI's 10 lakh will be credited to HDFC account and then at whatever time because RTGS is real time its name is real time it will not wait for the settlement cycle so in NEFT there is settlement cycle settlement cycle so in in this it will happen actually every hour in case of NEFT the settlement cycle is there are total every hour total cycle from 12 cycles from 8 am to 7 pm daily and on Saturday it is 1 pm only the number of cycles reduces also so here in case of RTGS what will happen real time means so within one hour it will not wait for the end of the hour so suppose at one particular time there is a request to transfer 10 lakh from SBI to HDFC account it will be done 
may be after 5 minutes 10 minutes whenever there is a request to transfer this 5 lakh here so this will be done there will be two separate transaction one value 10 lakh another value 5 lakh why it is important now understand this point because suppose this transfer request is of big volume transfers 10,000 crore it may happen big transactions happen no? some loan dispersal or some bank to bank other transfer so 10,000 crore to be transferred from SBI account to HDFC account and then 5,000 crores to be transferred back suppose and RBI is waiting throughout the day because or, or for one hour and in that one hour so what RBI thought okay we will do one transaction of say 5,000 uh, 5,000 crore transfer from SBI account to HDFC account so but uh, in, in during that time SBI used their fund for something and you don't find enough uh, 5,000 rupees 5,000 crore rupees in the SBI account, but HDFC money is credited to SBI. So, point is, that is the systemic risk. Big, big transactions not settled on gross basis. So, somebody is waiting for netting. So, there is a systemic risk. So, what is the advantage in, in case of the gross settlement is, every for every transaction, bank has to maintain a money, maintain that money in their account and every single transaction is settled so there is no risk uh, remains in the system while in case of the net settlement there is a risk remaining in the system because during that hour so many transactions are netted and normally actually sometime it goes to the end of the day in case of now it is not happening but earlier it used to happen so that they, the risk remains for the day you have to wait or the customer also has to wait so RTGS is a comparatively safe for the system and I told this is real time then there is a transaction limit also so re this is real time but the facility is available in the banks from say 9 a.m. to 4.30 a.m. 4.30 p.m. and the minimum transaction value in case of RTGS it is 2 lakh because this is meant for bigger amount and NEFT there is no such minimum so rupees 1 can also be transferred same is in IMPS rupees 1 can also be transferred the maximum value in RTGS is no limit and in any FTL so there is no limit but in case of IMPS it is 2 lakh rupees. So remember this. Yeah, then there are other electronic, we were discussing about the electronic payment systems, electronic payment methods. So then there are other prepaid cards. So you must have seen that prepaid cards, even there are gift cards. So if you are traveling, you can take a travel card. So you, you take a travel card of say 50,000 rupees, especially when uh, people travel abroad. So people take a lot of prepaid card in that currency. This is the electronic method. Then there are debit card. We all use debit card. And then there are credit cards. All this is also called plastic money. Debit card normally you call it ATM card also. And now the recent thing is mobile money transfer. So IMPS is of that example i forgot to mention one thing when we were discussing about the mechanization of the clearing houses and the improvement in the check system so one important development of that time was the micr technology magnetic ink character recognition magnetic ink sometimes this can be a exam question character recognition because still we are using micr check so MICR check is that there is a code written on the on the base of the check. You can also see it and these numbers have uh, significance. Normally that question will not be asked in the exam. So these characters are read by the machine and that helps in the sorting of the check. So that was the important development of that time when the clearing house were automated. And IMPS is important because now people are using IMPS a lot and it is also 24 by 7. Any time, even on Sunday, when RBI is closed, you can use that money. And actually what happens in case of IMPS, if you go to the, the fund transfer, so fund transfers is not happening immediate. So it's a kind of mobile messaging system developed by NPCI. Yes, one important development in, in case of the payment and settlement system is the creation of NPCI by RBI. NPCI was created in 2008 so 2007 we got the act passed 
and 2008 NPCA was created it, it becomes fully operational in 2009 because it was created in 2008 December and most of the functions related to payment and settlement operational things has been given to NPCI and NPCI is an umbrella organization umbrella organization for prompt swift convenient easy to use simple secure fast and cost effective payment solutions so IMPS is the brainchild of NPCI and in this actually the message goes to the other bank the amount is kept to maximum 2 lakh so based on the secured messaging system bank actually transfers the money to the customer's account without the bank has received the money from the other bank so that follows so initially in IMPS there was a system of generation of MMID why I am mentioning here MMID because sometimes this may be exam question sender has to generate the users have to generate uh, both uh, sender receiver so sender has to give the MMID of the receiver and the amount and then the funds are transferred but now it can be done without this by using the IFS code Indian financial system code which is mentioned in your checkbook and in your all internet banking so IFSC normally we call it in short no and the other important uh, very popular apps nowadays is UPI unified payment interface this works on a smartphone because for this you need a smartphone and this is also instant 24 by 7 it works it is also instant but for this you need to download the app then you have to log in you have to have a virtual payment address and then it will be linked to your bank account you set one m pin mobile pin and once you enter the mobile pin using the upi network upi platform the money is transferred npca has developed other thing also there is upi and imps for sure but in, in addition to that there is an up that is national unified ussd platform then rupay then nach it shall be written like this NACH National Automated Clearing House Aadhaar Enabled Payment System BBPS BBPS is for Bill Payment Bharat Bill Payment System and NACS National Automated Clearing House is for Bulk Transactions and NECT is National Electronic Toll Collection so this is for collection of the toll on highways so these are some development and many other things are coming up so we can uh, have more details on questions regarding these and you can read on on all this technology but here the idea of the discussion about the payment system in India was that how the payment system has been evolving from uh, check based check and demand draft with the major instrument to electronic payment system where RTGS and NEFT have been playing major role and now with the mobile all retail payments is basically moving towards IMPS and other UPI Bheem card based system which is also a major agenda for government also coming to the questions now the maximum amount one can transfer using NEFT so we saw this limit of transfer under NEFT there is no such upper cap for NEFT transfer and there is also no such upper cap for RTGS transfer second Indo-Nepal remittance facility scheme is based on so there is a Indo-Nepal in, uh, remittance facility you know lot of Nepali citizens are working in India so this facility is so that they can send their money to their home their native place through a safe mode so this remittance facility scheme is based on NEFT it is a cross border remittance scheme under NEFT scheme and one can transfer maximum 50,000 rupees from any NEFT enabled branch in India and the beneficiary will receive the fund in the Nepali group what is the full form of MMID which is used in IMPS so I told about MMID but I haven't discussed the full form of MMID because I thought we will discuss that in question and you can guess also but you have if you have read it earlier that is better so MMID the full form is mobile money identifier 
please remember this because it is not so straight you are getting mm mobile money and for id is identifier so you have to remember this next question is in payment system what does bhim stand for you must have heard about uh, bhim from prime minister modi he launched with that bhim app so what is the full form of bhim so bhim stands for bharat interface for money this is again a difficult one because if you are looking for i where is i so i have given confusing option like even h also high value immediate money so you may get confused so bharat interface for money is bhim and it's a mobile app developed by npci that we discussed it is based on upi it was launched by prime minister modi in december 2016 and it has been named after dr b r ambedkar the app is intended to facilitate e payments directly through banks next question in imps what does i stands for because this also people get confused in imps what is stand it is immediate these two makes most, most of the confusion then the other option i india international and impulse the correct answer it is immediate the full form is immediate payment service imps in in between there is nothing called m so here you have to remember this imps is immediate payment service next is which of the following is correct so gross settlement in rtgs is helpful for stability of the financial system that i told in very detail so this is correct government and rbi are making effort to increase electronic payment and reduce dependence on cash payments i think this you all know you have seen huge effort made by government even on demonetization bpss bbps stands for bharat bill payment system so this also i told briefly that bbps is also started by npci all statement are correct bbps is for bill payment system in india which is offering interoperable and accessible bill payment service to customers through a network of agent enabling multiple payment modes and providing instant confirmation of the payment so that bill can be like electricity bill telephone bill gas bill maybe many other things which can be included in this last question is npci was set up in year so this i discuss in the video and otherwise also this is not a tough question i request you to reply this by commenting on the comment section if you have any doubt that also you can ask in the comment and hope you have understood more about the payment system and also its importance in financial system thanks for your time see you in the next video